So, back to the point. The reason why Doe Dash is going crazy on YouTube, kudos to her again, is because people are tired of the flashy editing over the top ridiculousness, bro. When the when the style first came out, I ain't gonna lie, I never was able to gravitate to it. And then I saw everybody and their mother starting to do it. I'm not gonna lie. When it first came out, I started hating content creating because I'm like, ain't no way you about to tell me this is the standard now. I'm not about to do all this editing gymnastics and flashy pop-ups on the screen just to keep you entertained and watching my video. Honestly, I don't even want you watching my video if you require that much editing to 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 watch my video because I was never that. Even on my dance channel, I, I literally, like, I made a backflip tutorial, for example. I would do, like, a little intro, a little, ooh, I do a backflip onto the camera. Like, hey, today I'm going to teach you guys how to do a backflip. I get straight to the point in less than 10 seconds, right? And then I teach you how to do the backflip. I don't got this long introduction into a storyline, into a conflict. Like, God damn. People ain't trying to watch that. If we wanted to watch that, we'll go watch a game show. Every video started feeling like a game show on YouTube. Even if it was not a game show. Yeah, it was a game show. Great. <clears throat> but people took that concept and ran with it. And now, like, now it's like a backwards effect is happening, right? Now people are like, I'm tired of the over-professional, like, editing, John. They like the ones that are more homey and relatable. So he talks about uh, being on the and everybody gets tired of the fancy editing and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't believe that. I do think people like the talking heads. I do think people like people sitting down. Like, even me. I mean, do I look like I'm just sitting down in my car? No, I'm not. It does have some kind of studio feel, right? I don't think people really care that deeply if you're a little, have a little bit of a production. I disagree with that people on YouTube are now just looking for unedited videos. Because if that was the truth, then people who edit videos wouldn't do well. So that's not what's what's working necessarily. It's just that sometimes the right video is about the right subject and people want to hear about that. And people, I think people do enjoy listening to people talk um, because they can listen to us when they're on the pot, when they're driving in their truck or they're going on a very long trip. These type of videos work, right? <clears throat> but a younger person is probably not going to care for a video such as this for them because they're trying to get something done and move on to the next video. So these videos are more for people who are not necessarily sitting in their bedroom and just listening. These videos may be more for people who are on the road and they just want to hear something. They want to kind of, Hey, that's a good idea. That's a good, that's a good point. Well, I don't think it really matters about you just sitting in front of camera. I think it's more about your voice and your presentation because that's probably what people are going to hear. Cause I don't even sit down and just only when I'm doing research for this, like doing uh, videos for YouTube, but when I'm just sitting down on my own low sometime, I don't really sit down and watch videos like this where somebody's just talking and I just sit there and listen. I always do always listen to these kind of videos on the run. So I, a lot of it doesn't really matter if you're just sitting down in front of a camera. Of course, I live stream, so it's a tad bit different. But I also want to say that th there's nothing wrong with editing. For because I, you know, I have I made videos at one point where which were kind of documentary style. And there is an art to it. It's There's a lot of art and a lot of detail that goes into editing some videos. If you're really trying to get to a particular point. But with these individuals, I believe they're talking about, based off of me watching their videos, is they don't like the editing style in talking head videos. For example, me sitting down and talking about trinkets from TikTok they don't want to see videos like that where I'm sitting down talking about trinkets and I, then I throw in an edit and I, I I throw in a lot of stuff going on, kind of like a Danny Gonzalez video or a Curtis Connor video or Drew Gooden. They don't like those talking heads because of a far more editing in that and they want them to just sit down. But don't you? <laughs> but to say that they're not successful is crazy. Curtis Connor talking about every video he puts up has millions of views. Danny Gonzalez when he puts up a video, millions of views. Chad Chad, when she puts up a video, uh, millions of views. So there is the editing isn't what's hurting people. Editing doesn't hurt at all. It's an art form and people love it. 
If they didn't work, they wouldn't have millions of subscribers and get millions of views every time they upload. They take time out of their day. It takes far more time to sit down and edit a 45 minute video that was probably really a two to three hour video that you had to make and then do all the edits, which probably took you another two to three hours, depending on how fast you are, you know, <clears throat> and how much editing you have to do. But guys, when I used to make dockery, documentary videos, it may be a 45 minute video. It may have taken me a week or two to put that video together. All the research that went into the video, getting all the videos together, doing all the talking. I got you got to do some scripting sometimes when it comes to editing to get what your your point is across. And then you got to put all the clips together and then you got to go back and do post production, make sure all the audio is master to where it's all at the same levels you got to want you don't want it, your colors to be far off so in some cases you have to color code everything or color grade things where it, your your videos kind of look like it's all together i mean all the colors somewhat match you don't have one video that's really grainy looking and really fogged out and white compared to your video that looks a little bit more polished it takes time to edit so there's no reason to say, well, people just don't want editing. They just want you to sit down and be a talking head and don't edit not a fucking thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. My videos are somewhat edited because I live stream my videos, but nonetheless, like there's nothing wrong with clipping videos. Now, to be fair, I used to be the same guy. I used to be like, fuck editing. But I don't, I've never said editing was not a good thing. I believe editing definitely has its place. Some of the get videos you guys see me do research for. I watch Kiki Chanel. You know, guys, I watch a lot of girl channels. I watch Kiki Chanel, right? I watch Tiffany sometimes. Not a big fan of Tiffany, but I watch the videos because she is very educational. Uh, Social Simone. Can't think of everybody right now off the top of my head, but I watch a lot of people who do commentary channels, but they have to edit in clips. They have to edit in videos. They have to edit in sounds. They have to edit in sometimes you have to leave and come back and continue the video. That thing is of time. And I think those videos definitely have a place because they are educational videos. Every video can't be what I do. Every video can't be what Lord Heck does. Let Lord Heck does. We talking heads like this can't be the only format that works. And I just flatly don't believe that it is the way to the top success. Also, when I, wa I watch a lot of live content myself, a lot of live streams and stuff like that, if you take Kai Sinat or even some of the A&P members, uh, other individuals who live stream, it's normally somewhat a uh, product, okay? Especially if you've seen Kai's, dude, he had the whole fucking team of people. Candace Owens, whole team of fucking people. Matt, whole team of fucking people. Brett Cooper, who blew up and had, got like three, two million subscribers in one year. That was all editing. She got two million subscribers in a year. And that was, her videos are really edited, you know? So if you take somebody like Brett Cooper who edits her videos, and I think she's sitting at 3 million subscribers now. I mean, can we honestly sit here and say that editing videos don't work? That's just a flat out lie. People still enjoy the video. She's at 4.5 million subscribers. I think she started her channel two to three years ago. Are you going to get to four to, are you going to get to 4 million subscribers in a year? Or I mean, three years? Probably not. <laughs> You're probably not going to get to a million in five years. You know why? Because her videos are up here. She has a whole team of people that helps her do her thing. She was put in a right place to make videos. You watch stuff like First Take or FS1 shows. Or if you watch live news, those are all products. Those are all produced by a team of people. Those are always going to be, for the most part, far more successful than somebody like myself who's just a talking cat. I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay here. I want to keep getting bigger and better. I have a small little studio right now. I got a whole studio room right now. This is not where I want to stop. Eventually, I want to have a whole big ass room dedicated to making videos. I'm looking for a new place right now to get a, I need a big old room for more studio stuff. Now I got to do that within a budget, but it's because I want to produce more. I don't like my wall being this close to me behind me. I want a whole area of stuff, you know? So I can do more and I can film in other different places. I don't have to just do my all my studio right here. I want to be able to do it here. Maybe do it over there. Maybe back there. Have different studio setups. That means I'm going to have to have multiple computers with multiple and have quick Wi-Fi and quick internet. But at the end of the day, guys, yeah, that takes money and I got to work for that. But I want to get better. 
And then to you guys, it may look like this editing or it may look like a whole production because I got my boy over there helping me. But at the end of the day, man, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be like Brett. And Brett is uh, 10 years younger than me. I'm trying to be like Brett Cooper. I'm trying to be like the Candace Owens. Okay, I'm trying to be like them. I'm trying to be like the guys on First Take or FS1 shows. I'm trying to be like the news people. Not necessarily that content, but I'm trying to really take my shit seriously. So when my opportunity comes to really educate y'all, it won't just be me sitting here in my closet. If you guys remember, I used to make videos in my closet. It, I, I have to move up from there. I can't stay in my guy. Calm down. I can't stay in my closet every day recording on a <laughs> a cell phone mic that's this big i can't i can't do that so there's nothing wrong with editing or pushing the value of your videos cuz you do want to get better if you <laughs> unless you're unless you're not wanting to be on tv or you're not wanting to be um better in life a couple years from now yeah yeah keep making videos and looking looking how you do but to me it's a serious thing I don't do these things by mistake. I didn't change to a hoodie and a hat. I used to wear a tie and a button up. And I realized that ain't the move. That ain't the move. It's a distraction. So I've switched to a chain and wearing jewelry and wearing glasses. I take these off sometimes, but most of the time I wear them. I wear a hat. I, I'm, chain, I'm changing to a hoodie. These, it's not. It was by design. Before I came back after my hiatus, I had a plan. I didn't come back and say, well, I'm just going to turn on the camera and talk. No, I came back with a plan. But again, let's go back to Dodash. Let's come back to it, right? I'm I'm sorry I went on a rant. I saw it and I was like, nah, I gotta make this video. You know what I'm saying? Dodash is killing it right now because she is real. And people are tired of the fake over the top editing. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. But I know damn well I'm tired of that, John. I don't even watch videos like that, right? I be looking for like I'm not saying you don't you you just have to throw out a raw video and that's it. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying if you see somebody edit like a, a specific way, you ain't gotta copy the style bar for bar. Create your own editing style so people can attach an identity to your channel and be like i like watching lord hex videos because he edits his videos like this you see the difference you get an identity you know what i'm saying and then that can open a whole other a whole other avenue of revenue for yourself like if you if somebody wanted to hire you as an editor because your style is different you get what i'm saying man it's okay to copy, but I some of y'all be copy, not even copy. I straight be plagiarizing, like bar for bar. You know what I'm saying? And and people just want to see something real on YouTube because it started off as a real platform, and now it's just corporations and all types of nonsense on here, and everybody trying to make bread instead of making content. You get what I'm saying? I think that's where, like, when people started figuring out you can make bank, like, 100K a month off YouTube, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I got to Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nothing wrong with that mindset. Get your money. Get rich. Great. But when everybody starts to do it, this is where you open a window for Dodash to come through, like, hey, I'm real. You missed the real content? Okay. <laughs> Back to what... This is now the people who are want to making money on YouTube, and he says you get you get tired of seeing all the editing, and um, you get tired of seeing people just kind of go for the money route, and it's becoming very corporate. <clears throat> There's nothing. You know what? This reminds me of a video I was watching the other day, where we was talking about Kai Sinat, and we kind of talked about that the other day. But Kai Sinat had raised the bar for live streaming, right? And I remember talking and uh, listening to another guy who said the same thing. He said, "My my, I want other people to succeed because if they make more money, I'm gonna make more money." <laughs> it's just like when Kevin Samuels was around. When he had his format, Kevin Samuels, he came with a with a pretty unique format. But because he was successful, other people got to go be successful. 
that's how I see it. I don't mind YouTube being corporate. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a business. I don't mind YouTube having people who are just on here to make money. That's fine. If you're a competitive person, you shouldn't want to just be like, well, I want to be able to just make videos and not edit them at all and succeed. No, that's, that shouldn't be your mindset. It should be like, well, I don't, I, I'm not very good at editing or I don't necessarily want to edit my videos. How can I take that and go here? What can I do? If I, if I choose, if you really choose, I'm not going to edit for any reason at all. How can you take it from there to here then? You need to be sitting at home thinking, well, in order for me to make it and not edit my videos, I've got to, the whole time I've got to be entertaining and it's got to be something that keeps the people's eyes on the video want, want to keep people listening. So you should always be pushing that boundary and be like, you got to thank God for the people who came to YouTube just for money. Why? Because when they did that, that's why YouTube has, is pushing out all this shit, right? All the stuff that, come on, baby. All the stuff that you see in the YouTube studio now, the A and B testing, the brand, the brand connects, the memberships, the super chat, all these revenues to make money is because of the guys who were like, damn, I want to make more money, YouTube. Y'all need to figure out a way for me to make more money. It's because of the people like that that were saying, I need more money. We need more, more ways to make money. I want to be able to test my thumbnails and A and B compare my thumbnails so I can make more money. I need more money. And so it, it was those people who kept saying, YouTube, I need, I need to bread. That is the reason that content creators like me have more revenue. I mean, have more avenues to make bread. So it's, it has nothing to do with people who got on here and wanted to make money. Now, back to the copying thing. Like people copy people bar for bar. God, that is what YouTube is. That is what live streaming is. That is what TikTok is. That is what Twitch is. That is what Kick is. Copying. <laughs> we all copy each other in some form or fashion. My whole style of setup and the reason I'm set up just like this was based off a live streamer that I watched. Okay. Now, we obviously look like two different people, but he gave me the idea to do all this stuff. The soundboard I got from other live streamers doing all that, you know, the, the give that guy a map using this soundboard that I have over here. I got that from other live streamers. Am I copying them? No, I took an idea that they had and I made it mixed with Trey. That's what everybody has to do on YouTube. There's no, I mean, YouTube, there's no way to create content unless you copy at first because you need to find what works for you. How's your style go? Because there's too many people who create content. There's 35 million people on YouTube. I don't know how many there are on TikTok, but 35 million channels on YouTube. And I think that number is bigger now. There's just no way you can be original. Now, you can take some concepts and become original, but to hop on and be like, hey, guys, you know what I'm going to do that nobody's ever fucking done on YouTube? I'm just going to talk in front of the camera. I have no problem with DoDash, and we're going to watch um, something from her in a minute. I got no problem with DoDash and people like that, but they're not new. It is absolute bullshit to say that there has not been real content creators. I am an I am a content creator fanatic. I am a fan of people who make content. And sometimes I'm a, I'm a professional hater on some people's content. I'll admit to that. But nonetheless, I still watch it because they may be able to teach me something. I might not like them but I watch it, even if I'm hate watching. Hey, I'm telling the truth, baby. Sometimes I hate watch, and that's a problem. But sometimes I hate watching, I realize, why the hell do I hate this person? They just don't make content I like. It's all good. But I watch a lot of people that you guys have never heard of. There are people who've never heard of me, obviously. There are people you never heard of. There's just too many channels that you can hear about. But there is a lot of fucking, I can tell you, because YouTube recommends it's really small channels to me because of the kind of videos that I watch. So I get really small channels. I get people who have 15 subscribers. I get people with 1,000 subscribers. I get people in the 100 subscriber range. And there's a lot of people who have been doing this for years who are talking heads like this, where they just get on here and talk and try to inspire you or try to motivate you. There's a lot of content creators who do this, but they don't get the views. You know why? Because there's a lot of us. So that it's, it's a flat out lie to say there's not many of us. That's not true. It's just sometimes somebody pops off, they make the right video and it pops off. It happens. Those people tend to fall back off because it's hard to keep it up. 
if you're just a person who just randomly gets on and a video blows up, it's more than likely you're gonna you're gonna crash and burn eventually because your content isn't getting any better. <laughs> oh boy. I don't want to have to do it to him. I know that's fucked up. But listen to me. You're old for that, baby. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know I'm wrong for it. But the truth is, those people tend to fall off because they don't ever up their production. You can't make those videos forever. It just is what it is. I've watched a lot of big content creators, and I could be wrong. But even somebody who does just sit in front of the camera most of the time, which is Penguin Zero, Moist Critical has so many different avenues. Of, he's such a big live streamer, and he does put a lot of craft into his work. But people, <laughs> but people look at um, Charlie and think they can be him. You can't. He's too consistent. You can't be Charlie. The reason Charlie is very successful, first he started off gaming and then he blew up from there. But one of the things that Charlie does well is he's so fucking consistent talking about different topics. Charlie doesn't just get on and say, hey, guys, here's another video about how you should quit your job. You can't talk about that eight times a month. Charlie talks about so many fucking different things that if you wanted to do what he does, you're going to have to spend the vast majority of your time just researching topics and looking and seeing what's trending or see what's going on in the Internet realm. That takes a lot of work to just do that all day. Because that means you can't just get on your phone and fuck around. You, it's got to be a business. You got to really get on your phone to really be, I'm, I'm researching shit so I can talk about it. You cannot talk about life every single day. That is one of the reasons I always pick a topic or I pick a video to go off of. Because I can't sit here and just say the same things every day because even I run out of ideas, you know. It's hard for me to think of stuff all the time. So I have to use other content creators to help me. Just like you see other content creators use TikTok, I use YouTubers. <laughs> like people, how people use TikTok, I use YouTubers for sure. That's how I make it. Some of us do. Some of us use YouTube for our content and other people use TikTok. But we have to fuck with each other. Lord Heck makes videos that, I, that helps me make videos. It's, content creation is a community. And we all have to help each other. So there's nothing wrong with copying somebody else just to get your feet wet. That's just how it has to be in the beginning. You're going to have to copy. So in, in, you're about to see all these motherfuckers who are quick to say, well, you got to be authentic and not copy people are the, saying the same shit people have been saying on YouTube since the beginning of YouTube. Being authentic. You're not new if you say that. But there's a lot of authentic motherfuckers on YouTube that get no views because people don't want to watch the same shit every day. They don't. Because I just feel like people have this opinion that like, oh, I'm not good enough to like be a YouTuber. Oh, I'm not, I can't, I'm not pretty enough to just post content. Or it's like rooted in some weird insecurity. Like back to what I was saying at the beginning of this video where it's like, oh, I need my hair done. I need my makeup done. No girl, no boy, whoever you are, you don't. You don't need to look a certain way to play the part. Like people miss authentic, authenticity. People miss authenticity. This is what people want to see. People want to see you just talking to a camera, living your life as a normal human being like the rest of us. When you see these people who have their makeup done, their hair done, their skin is flawless, they have no apparent insecurities, like they're just like these confident people, that's not realistic. That's not humane. People aren't like that. Everyone has insecurities. Everyone has their things. And the fact that some of us can make that content like I'm trying to make right now. And they can just talk to a camera and just put that content out there. Like, if you're able to do that, I promise you, you will find your people online. If you cannot find your people in person, Post your content, post your opinions, post what you have to say, post your personality online because online is where you're going to find your people, okay? I, if you don't know much about me, I competed in a bodybuilding show in April, my first show in April, and I posted my prep progress, my prep process, whatever you want to call it, my journey on TikTok because... The people in my life didn't understand what I was doing. So what did I do? I started posting online because if my parents, my friends, if no one was going to listen to me, at least my phone will. And my phone did listen and I found my people. And that 
sense of like community that I found within social media was so fulfilling in my heart but to a degree because it's through a screen but still the fact that I was able to know that there are people out there that get me I was like mind blown so I don't know what my what my like revelation is through this video but again I think it's just stop waiting for the perfect moment just start posting because there will never be a more perfect moment than right now <sighs> Let's talk about the, once again, being authentic, getting and putting your makeup on, dolling yourself up. Oh, I can't make a video like that. That looks horrible. Ladies and gentlemen, you can definitely wear your makeup. Okay. Wear makeup. There's nothing wrong with that. If you choose to, if you're a person who wears makeup, but if you don't wear makeup, just look nice on the camera. You don't need to come on the fucking camera. Calm down. <gasps> Breathe. You don't need to come on the camera looking busted as fucking possible. I get it. Sometimes you may be in a rush. If you're on a time crutch and you want to make a video, I get it. You right after a workout, understandable, but you shouldn't go out of your way to look horrible on camera. See, that's the problem I have with people when they say being authentic. It's just like people from my culture would be like, I'm just keeping it real, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, dog. Come <laughs> on, man. It's that whole thing, man. It's always trying to keep it real. You don't have to. First of all, this is the internet. You don't have to be completely open to people and be transparent about every fucking thing that you do in your life. So if you want to get on here and be somewhat superficial... Get on here and be a character to some degree. That's fine. We all do that to some degree. I don't think it has to be, hey, guys, I'm going to open up and tell you how much I make on YouTube, how much I make at work, how much I make at my side hustle. I'm going to show you how much my bills are. And as you can see, I only have $30 in my bank account. You don't have to do all of that shit. Some people don't think feel like that's being honest and transparent. No, that's you choosing to do that. You don't have to do any of that. There's plenty of people who are successful clearly who are successful, who don't ever mention how much money they make on YouTube, ever mention how much bread they're getting. People who choose to do that, they normally do it for an educational reason. But some people just do it to be like, hey, guys, look how much money I made on YouTube. You should start a channel too. That's what a lot of people do. And then when a, and when a person inevitably fails, you just tell them that they, they didn't work hard enough. It's hard. YouTube is a place of hard work. TikTok is a place of hard work. Okay. If you don't learn to put your, put your, your, you gotta really gotta put in everything. And the whole thing is, the beautiful thing about it is, we're all humans off of this camera. We're, so we're all, when these cameras go off, our lives have to go on. You know, so we will change. I can't come on here and tell you, hey guys, I'm gonna be the same guy today as I was 10 years ago. I may say something today that I think is bullshit 10 years from. So, I'm just kind of sick of hearing people that are getting, it's almost like people are getting shame because they want to look good on camera. There are people who on TV, as you see, they wear nice dresses, they wear suits and ties, they look professional. You don't, to be a successful, to be a successful content creator doesn't mean you have to just dress like shit, like you just woke up out of bed. It's your choice to choose what you want to do with your content. Now, let me go ahead and address this whole concept of, should you just start a YouTube channel? Or TikTok. As you guys know, I'm very new to TikTok. I'm trying to learn how to create content for TikTok. I only know how to really make this kind of content. So I really have to sit down with myself every day and learn how to make vertical content. And just because I don't have any of my soundboards, I don't have the same, you can't see the vast majority of this video. And I have to try to condense my shit. Now I can put up 60 minute videos on TikTok. And I just put up my regular videos and when that's what I'm going to do, but I also want to purposely create content for TikTok, meaning it's only going to TikTok. I want to make sure that the YouTube and TikTok aren't the same fucking thing because I don't think that's fair to people who watch my TikToks. I want them to see a different side of me than what YouTube would get because it's a different platform and I have to learn that. So my my my, my thing and my, for people, I would say, <clears throat> just turn on the camera, like I said earlier. What I tell people, just start your channel. It doesn't matter what you look like. Yes, I would say that part. But there needs to be improvement over time. 
and I don't think it's wise to tell people you don't don't throw. She wasn't saying she wasn't saying don't throw on makeup, but the concept of you don't need makeup or you don't need to be looking nice. That's your choice. If you choose you want to wear a bonnet or a do rag or something like that, fine. But understand, you will put a ceiling over yourself by the way you present your content. Okay. Now I cuss in my content. Okay. Other people, they're more, they're more BG. Both of us are going to have different avenues of what we do. If people don't like people cussing, they can listen to me because I don't cuss a lot. But if they don't like cussing at all, I'm not going to be the one for them. I'm going to talk about OnlyFans. I'm going to talk about pornography. I'm going to talk about um, the things that are going on with men. And I'm going to get on women. If that's not your shit, then we're going to have different lives. So the way you present yourself does matter. If you're a person who's going to get on here and talk about how to build a million dollar business, right? And you get on here and you look like shit. Like you just get on here, you look dusty and crusty. You ain't shower, your lips dry. I mean, if you just get on here and look like whatever, it's going to destroy, it's not going to destroy your credibility, but it's going to make it harder for people to want to listen to you. You see that some people are successful just because of the way they appear on there. Kevin Samuels was very good because of how he appeared online. Brett Cooper, very good because of how she appears online. Candace Owens is very good about how she appears online. Danny Gonzalez, the same way. All these people I've already mentioned earlier. How you present yourself does matter. If you, So don't just get on here and think that you, YouTube and TikTok is just a place where you can just be whatever and you're going to have the same outcomes as A and B. No, you're going to have a different outcome if you choose to be a certain way. If I came on here saying just cussing up a storm every time I got on here and I just talked about really vulgar stuff, I have a different audience and you best believe I'm not going to get presented to a certain amount of people because of the way I speak. It's the same thing for other people. So just understand that your presentation is important. So don't just get on camera and feel like you have to be dirty and busted up. That's my problem. It's like it's like sometimes we get into people who want to look nice on camera or people who do give a shit. People who say, you know what? I want to use a nice camera. I want good lighting. I want to look good in my videos. I want to look the best I can. Some people want that shit because they're like, that That makes the video better for me and easier for me. No, Not everybody wants to say, hey, I want to film in my fucking car where the audio is horrible. No. Quit getting on people who want to look good. So if you're able to watch this video at this low of quality... That's really telling of you, and I I can't commend you enough for doing that. Even if I get two views on this video, that to me affirms enough. Enough. That's it. That's all I need. I don't I don't need thousands of people to view my videos. Would that be cool? Yes. Is that my goal? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I just want people to have second thoughts and like just to make people realize that life isn't so serious and you're able to just share who you are on the internet and find success in doing that and find joy in doing that that's I think my main mission is that like you are perfect the way that you are you are perfect the way God made you and you don't need again the hair makeup the camera whatever to be a content creator to be influential whatever whatever and i think that's the end of this video i i yapped in this one 13 minutes are you kidding i'm proud of myself i'm packing myself on the back for that one this was a solid video i'm very happy with this one <laughs> i won't lie so if you guys like this video if you guys want to subscribe to my channel i try to post every day I am posting every day, despite my circumstances. As you see, I'm posting right now. I'm going to start posting shorts because my goal is to get monetized. I would love to do that. Um, if I developed a following, a subscriber like community, that would be really cool. Um, I would love to like have some conversations with you guys. So feel free to comment down below. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all those YouTube things. Uh, if you want, if you want, follow along. See where I end up in life, okay? We're in this together. We're in this together. I appreciate you. I love you. I hope you guys have a blessed day, night, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. You give her some grace. She's got to learn. She's got to learn. But I want you to <laughs> understand the contradictory um, in the ending of that video. 
She says she wants two views. She says she don't care if she gets two views, but I hope to get monetized. Then it matters if you get more than two views. It does matter if you get more than two views because you can't get two views every video and then hope one day to be monetized. Because if you get two views a day, remember, to get monetized, you have to have a certain amount of watch time hours within a certain time frame. You're not going to get to 4,000 watch time hours with two views a video. Especially if you're, unless you posted hundreds of videos a day. Maybe that was, that's, even then that wouldn't be enough. That'd be what, 200 views a day? Um, I wish people would just stop lying. Like, I, I used to be just like her, so that's why I'm not killing her. Please, any of these people in these videos, just know that it's nothing personal toward them. I'm talking about the idea. She's, she's speaking whatever she believes to be true. I don't want to talk about the idea. She just happens to be the avatar, and so is Lord Heck. They're just avatars. We all got to quit lying to ourselves. I want views. I do. Now, to be honest with you guys, it doesn't bother me. I don't care if a video does well or not. Meaning, if a video does very well, I realize that's something I need to keep going. But it, it's, not, it, it's not exciting for me. I don't really care about the views like that. I know where I'm trying. I told you, my goals are out in the fucking stratosphere. 10 million subscribers. That's where I'm trying to get to. So the views to me don't matter like that. Like, I don't get excited. I'm happy. I'm like, okay, this video did well. What can I do to keep improving on that kind of video? Maybe people like that kind of style. How can I keep that while still making sure I'm staying somewhat relative and relevant? I, I'm, my, the hardest fucking thing about creating content is trying not to fucking fade into irrelevancy. I have to talk about certain people and talk about certain things to keep myself relevant. Because at the end of the day, that's what YouTube and TikTok is about. You got to stay relevant. So that's one thing I'm trying to work on is make sure I don't just fade off into this, this oblivion. Okay. So I, I'm trying to watch other people and learn what are people talking about, which is why I made the video yesterday on my, um, I married a monster. I normally don't make content like that, but if like people are talking about it, I got to talk about it. I'm trying to get better about that. People want to hear stuff that's going on in the internet. So it's always trying to improve like that as well. But it, the views, so the views don't matter to me in a way of it makes me excited. It matters to me in a way of, okay, I need to keep trying to make sure I'm getting better. I need to get my, my baseline right now, my goal right now is my baseline needs to be a thousand views. I, Cause there's, I want it to be no video I put up gets less than a thousand. The worst video I possibly could put up is a thousand. That's what I'm working for. I need, I'm trying to create a floor. My floor right now is obviously zero views. <laughs> I can have, I can definitely put out a video that gets zero views. So I need to, I'm trying to be a floor raiser because the higher my floor, the higher my ceiling. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying, because you know, nobody, if you've never ever been in a house, I've never been in a house where the floor is right there on the ceiling, right? The floor and the ceiling, you gotta have some space to walk around. I'm trying to keep raising that floor till the ceiling goes up as far too. The floor goes with the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to build a floor and a baseline. So for individuals who talk about they don't care about the view, they if just one person watches, that's all that matters. But I do hope they get monetized. No, that ain't how it works. Just tell the fucking truth. You want to be monetized? You want to make this a full-time job so you can help uh, motivate people? Even though, once again, motivational content is great, but it is very hard to keep up because you – because. If you're not, if you're a full-time content creator, which means you're not getting out anymore, it's very hard to keep being motivational because you really don't know what you're talking about because you don't talk to enough people. You got to get out there and go to the charities. You got to get out there and go to your, uh, support your community with the money you're making. You need, probably need to go, to, if you're religious, go to your churches. <laughs> you know, you need to get out in the real world. Go grocery shopping. You need to go to something that gets you out in front of people, even if it's just like going out to a karaoke bar every night. Get some fucking friends. Because content creation, you're gonna leave your, your friends are gonna go away because you can only have so many friends if you're not at work. A lot of people make friends at work. So if you make this a full time thing, trust me, a motivational content is going to die for you because you can only do that so much, right? Look at somebody like David Goggins, who is a motivational speaker for the most part. Look at what he does. He still gets out and runs, still gets out and he has a job doing being a smoke jumper. As far as I know, he still does smoke jumping. He goes and does presentations, he goes to speak to crowds. 
He still does work. He still knows what it feels like to fail. He still does races or whatever he does now. He still does stuff to where he can be like, hey, guys, I've noticed over these last five years, as I was doing this, something you guys didn't know I was doing, I was actually training for the ultimate, ultimate marathon of 3,000 miles, right? And I've been training for that, and here's what I learned in this. I fucking failed. I fucking failed. I fuck, you know, stuff like that. But if your only job is to create content and your content is about creating content, oh, hold up. Slow down. I'm about to preach in this motherfucker. <laughs> Why did I bleep out the F? Um, <laughs> you know, you remember when you were a kid, you'd be like, motherfucker. Anyway. When you create content about creating content all the time, there's nowhere to go from there. There's just nowhere to go from there because your views are going to go down because it's like, how, how long can you talk about creating content, but you're not creating content. You're creating content about creating content. That is not content. Motherfuckers that y'all see on there always talking about how to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Motherfucker, that's not content after a while because you're not creating any content. Your content is about creating content, but you can't give any evidence of your content being able to do that because you don't make any. You only talk about making it. It's like a motherfucker who makes money off of getting, they make money teaching you how to make money. Anyway, I digress. So please, guys, if you want to be monetized and you want to be a subscriber, you want to get a big fan base, just fucking say that. Listen, guys, listen. And here's something that's so frustrating. It's okay to become unrelatable. Unrelatable. Non-relatable. Which one is it? It's okay because you saw Lord Herc, he said that same thing. He said, um, you want to stay relatable. You can't. If you want to get to this magical place, whatever the fuck that is, you're gonna people aren't going to be able to relate to you. Because once you start hitting that 10,000, 100,000 subscribers, people can't relate to that because the vast majority of people who get on YouTube will never see that. On TikTok, if you get to 10 million followers on TikTok, the vast majority of people are going to be able to relate to that because they have no fucking idea how to get there. They don't know what it takes to get there. They can't relate to you no more. This is what it is. So it's a lot easier to be humble and relatable while you don't have the subscribers and all that. But once it, if it ever does come for you, just guess what? You're not going to be relatable. That's why I say, guys, just keep pushing your product. You don't have to become unauthentic or inauthentic. You don't have to do all those things in order to be yourself. You can keep pushing your production value up. Just keep making your shit look nice. Keep getting better. Keep picking topics. Keep put more time into research. You can do all that shit and still be yourself. But keep pushing because it's just what has to happen. You should want to strive to be the best content creator you can. And being the best content creator you can. I'm reiterating this again. To be the best content creator you can, you can't just keep making the same product for the next 5, 10 years. There's no reason after three years on YouTube, you should look like you're still in the closet recording. Fucking improve. That is how it works in the real world. When you work in corporate or you work in the medical field or you work as a blue collar person, there's something wrong. If you've been in the game 10 years and you ain't been promoted, you ain't made no extra money. You got you got your 50 cent promotion that everybody gets. <laughs> Unless that's the life you want to live. That's fine. If you want to, you don't want to move up. I get that. But for the guy, the way these people talk, the way Lord Hart talked, the way um, Addison here talked, they want, they making it sound like they want to make this a full-time gig. Well, Lord Hart already does it. Well, he has a job actually. Never mind. But you didn't want to make this a full-time gig, motivating people or stuff like that. It's like, well, you can't do that if you don't get better. People don't get motivated by seeing the same motherfucker do the same thing. You know, they don't. It's just a matter of time. And the beautiful thing also, and I'm going to, we're going to move on to the manifestation piece, man. But I want to reiterate this. Once you hit a certain threshold, people are going to get you to that next threshold. If you have 10,000 subscribers, people are going to get you to 100,000. Once your video blows up, they're going to get you there. YouTube will get you there. The problem is, what do you do once you get there? People are going to wonder why you have 100,000 subscribers and you're still sitting in your house with your hair not dead talking about how much money you made on YouTube. You've made eight of those. I don't want to hear about that no more. Can I hear about something else? But see, the beautiful, the thing that sucks about being a talking head, I said this already, is how much can you talk about? You, the people who say they want to make do all these videos every single day. It's like, how the fuck can you do that? What can you talk about 
every single day when you're not doing anything to get better. You're not doing these reaction videos or commentary videos or anything. You know, when I watch, I keep going through this shit. I know, I know, I know, I know. When I watch the Kiki Chanel's, okay? When I watch the Social Simones, okay? When I watch all these motherfuckers blowing up, I forgot her name, damn it. But there's a lot of tubers. And when I watch FS1, when I watch First Things First, when I watch Speak, when I watch The Facility, when I watch First Take, when I watch Good Morning Football, when I watch all these stuff, every pe- we're talking about big mega corporations and small people who are smaller YouTubers that I'm talking about. When I watch all these motherfuckers, you know one thing they do? They look at other people's content and then commentate on it. Even the big corporations, they'll get on there and be like, so last night we were watching a basketball game and somebody came out and said that Paul George is completely washed. Stephen A., do you believe that Steve, that Paul George is washed? And people get pissed off about that. They'll be like, why the fuck are they talking about that? Motherfucker, you can only talk about so much every day. You need other content. So yeah, we're going to talk about Paul George as he washed. Yeah, today we're going to talk about all the Ravens ass. Today we're going to talk about that shit. Today we're going to talk about LeBron's tweet. I know people get pissed off about that, but it's like, it's content. It's hard to make 280 videos, do a three-hour video, I mean, three-hour uh, three hour show, talk about seven to eight to ten topics. Let's just call it eight. Talk about eight topics every day, five days a week, 280 days out of the year. I'm taking out people who get vacations. So two, let's say 300 years, 300 days, 300 days out of the year. Huh? How do you want me to do that? Hmm? Explain that to me. Oh, you can't, right? You can't. Yeah, that's kind of it's kind of fucking complicated. Forty topics a week is, is is difficult to come up with, and I gotta try to make it entertaining. Okay, that's twenty four thousand topics a year. That's tough. If I did the math. So yeah, so just quit hating on people who who don't just sit here and talk in front of camera. It's hard to do this shit every day, day in and day out, without repeating yourself. And that blue light is shining like a motherfucker right here. Moving on. <laughs> What we really came to see. This will probably be when I edit this. This I'll probably cut it here because this is already an hour. But this video, we're really gonna break down. Or may I may put it all together. I don't know yet. Oh wait, we're not done. Sorry, we still got two more videos, guys, to talk about. This video, we're gonna really break down. Two minutes at a time. So if you just got here and you're thinking the live stream is about to end, no, we still got about two hours. Of live streaming. I made a promise that I was going to make up for my fuck up yesterday. But today we have a plan. See, that's another thing. Let me let me go off script. This is for my people who are watching the live stream. This is going to get edited out. But guys, when I was talking earlier about having a plan when it comes to live streaming and having a plan when it comes to making YouTube videos or TikTok videos, you need to have a plan. Today I have a plan. Yesterday you guys saw that I got my live stream taken down because I showed a video for too long. And, it was, and I, I went and looked back and I disagreed because I was given educational thing and I still agree with that. But at the same time, when you live stream, YouTube doesn't know what you're doing. They think you're just stealing content. So I can't get mad at them for that. So today what I'm doing differently is setting a timer so I make sure I don't go over. I know how much I know how much um, you can react to a, a video or commentate on a video. I've already watched this whole video, but I have a fucking plan so you don't make mistakes. What if I was a huge live streamer? What if I was somebody who got 10,000 people in here and I got my fucking thing terminated because I was being stupid? That's what I'm talking about. That's why I say you've got to continue to improve. You can't just always get on here and just be like, oh, I'm just going to make whatever video I want to, bro. No. Have a fucking plan. 